So first, let's construct some rain with trap code particular. Let's create a new comp, call this rain, and create a new solid for particular. Go to effect and apply particular. And we've got our default settings here. Again, by default, particles emit in all directions uniformly. And if we go into the emitter section here, we've got direction set to uniform. Rain falls in a specific direction, it falls downward. So we're gonna to need to set this to a directional setting and point the direction to be downward. We also need to have this emitting from a much larger area than a single point. So I'll set this emitter type to box. And I'll set the emitter size in X to be much bigger. In fact, I'll make it larger than the size of the composition so we don't see the edges. Next, I'll move the position x, y upward so that it's above our field of view. The rain will come from above and fall downward. Now, I need to set the rotation to 90 degrees in x so it's actually going to end up falling downward. And I'd like these all traveling in a straight path, so I'm going to set the direction spread to zero, because right now they have a random angle of up to 20 degrees in any direction. If I set this to zero, these will all be falling downward. Now obviously these need to be going a lot faster, so I'll set the velocity to something quite high, even higher than that. I'll give a little bit of an angle to the rain using the Y rotation. So it's falling at just a little bit of an angle. Now, theoretically, this is how rain falls, but it really doesn't quite look like rain just yet. So we'll tweak this just a little bit by turning the size of the particle down quite a bit. We'll go down here to the size. We'll set this to two. And the critical element here is to add motion blur to the particles. So first we're gonna to need to enable motion blur for the comp by clicking this switch right here. And we'll need to click motion blur for the layer. Now as the raindrops are falling, it looks a lot more like rain. Let me turn the particle size up just a little bit so we can see this a little better. So what we see right now is a rather thin sheet of rain. We don't see much in the foreground or the background because our box emitter is rather thin. It doesn't have much front to back depth. Now, if I go into the emitter size Z, you would think that this would give us our Z depth, but don't forget we've rotated the emitter 90 degrees. So it's actually a different axis. It is the Y axis. So I'm gonna have to turn this Y axis up to give some depth here. So expanding the area in which the particles are being emitted up here. So now we have particles that are coming close to the camera as well as particles that are fairly far away from the camera. And I'll turn up the particles per second just to give a little bit more rainfall here. Now, one thing you'll notice when you start using particular, if I rewind to the beginning by hitting home, is that we don't see any rain on the first frame. We have particles per second, and well, at zero seconds, we don't have any seconds to create any particles. It has to take a little bit of time to start generating particles. If you'd like the rain to start from the very first frame, we do have that option. We'll have to go into the options here. And under this section here, we have a pre-run. And what we can do is set this to a value higher than zero. I'm just gonna set this to 100. Notice this is in percent. This is percent of the time of the composition. So 100% would mean that this particle setting is behaving as if it had been generating particles for a full 10 seconds before frame zero. So essentially setting it to 100 starts the particles emitting from frame zero. So we don't have any ramp up time to get the rain going. It starts right at the first frame. So next let's construct this snow right here. This introduces some new concepts like custom particles and depth of field. So let's create a new composition for our snow and create a new solid and apply trap code particular. 
So we're going to have a similar set of settings like we did with the rain. We need a box emitter, so it's emitting from an area. And I'll turn up that X size so that the emitter size is spilling outside of the composition window. We'll move the Y position up above our field of view. And I need to rotate this emitter negative 90 degrees so that they are falling downward. Now as I play this, you'll see that the particles are falling and then right about three seconds they will start to disappear. Now, as we stated before, particles have a lifespan. They're born, they have a life, and then they die. We can define how long that lifespan is right here in the particle section. Right now it defaults to three seconds, and our composition is 10 seconds long. The easiest way to make sure that none of these particles disappear is by setting this lifespan to 10 seconds. So now we shouldn't see any of these disappearing. Now if we go into the emitter section here, we'll see that our particles are emitting in a uniform direction. So they are taking all types of random angles here. I'd like to set this to a directional setting so that they're falling downward. This will look a little more realistic. Also, we'll size up this emitter size Y to get these closer and further away from the camera. Now, as I expanded this emitter size in the Y outward, you can see in the back, particles are sort of being born in our field of view. I'm going to move this up even more so we don't see them being born. We should take care of it. Now, let's change the particle type. So far, we're using uh, the default setting, which is the sphere. And we'll change this to a snowflake. We're going to use a custom particle for this. And what this does is allows us to use a layer inside our After Effects composition as a particle. So I need to have some sort of layer in here to use as a particle. I've already constructed a snowflake using basic shape layers within After Effects already. And this will be included with your project. So this composition is now in our comp window. And I'm going to turn it off. I don't need it to be visible. I just need it to be in the composition so I can access it from the particular settings. So let's go back to our particular settings, go into the particle type, and select custom. At this point, I'm going to need to tell it which layer to use. I'm going to select the snowflake layer. And in the time sampling right now, it is set to current time. Notice that this Snowflake composition is fairly short. I've only made it 10 frames long. So we'll see it over the course of the length of this composition, which is just a few frames. So this composition is way too short because we need it over here. This composition is 10 seconds in length and just a few frames is not nearly going to be long enough. So what we can do is change how the time sampling works for that we can tell it to start at the birth of the particle and play once and then stop, or we can tell it to start at the birth and loop this composition over and over and over. And that's actually what I'm going to do. So now each particle is using this snowflake as its particle type. And as you can see right here, we've got one coming fairly close to the camera. Now they're a little bit small, so let's go into our particle size here and turn these up just a little bit. And we'll add some rotation to this. So if I go into the rotation speed here, set this to 0.2, and each of these will have some rotation on them as they fall. Now one more thing I'm going to do here is add some depth of field. Now this is a in-camera effect, so we need a camera in our composition to create a sort of a camera depth of field. I'm going to use a 35 millimeter preset camera. And if I twirl my camera settings open here, I've got depth of field here, which I can turn on. So what this is going to do is add a little bit of focus variation from the objects that are close to the camera to objects that are far away from the camera and everything in between. Now, in particular, we have to make sure that in our render mode here, we have this set to 
full render plus depth of field square or smooth. Now, what this means is that Particular can use its own smooth depth of field rendering. After Effects, right now in After Effects CS3, uses kind of a box blur effect for its depth of field, which looks a little bit square. So if you'd like your particles to match the After Effects look and look a little bit like a box blur, you can use this setting here and your blurs will match identically. If we use depth of field smooth, this will be a much smoother depth of field rather than the After Effects built-in depth of field renderer. I like using the depth of field smooth render. It looks a lot more natural. So objects that come close to the camera are going to be kind of blurred and objects that are far away. And we have an area in between that is in focus. And this is totally controlled by the camera in terms of uh, objects that are in focus with this focus distance here. It looks very natural and I really like the look of this. Now, like you saw in the original, just to add a little bit of interest to this, I'm going to drop a background behind this. Let's call this background. Behind everything, I'll use a simple ramp. Set this to radial and control the start and end points of my ramp to make a fairly soft gradient from the center to the edge. So I'll set this black color to like a green and then maybe a little darker green on the outside. There we go, we get a nice soft holiday background design element 